My dear friends, we are about to begin this Mass of Friday, the fourth week of Easter. Into this Mass, we continue to pray for all those who have been sickened by this virus, especially those here at World Reap and around our country and friends around the world who are also sick. We pray for God's healing and strength. We pray for our healthcare workers and pray for all those who support their ministry. That God may bless them, that together results may be, may be received. We also pray for people who have asked our prayers today, those who are celebrating birthdays or other anniversaries. We pray that God may bless them. And finally, we want to pray for our country and its leaders. Pray that our leaders may make healthy and productive decisions, especially at this very critical time. For our entrance hymn, we will sing the song, Table of Plenty. Come to the feast of heaven on earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need. Here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table. Where saints and sinners are friends, I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide. For all that we need, here at the table of plenty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Be with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves for this Mass and to prepare to pray for the intentions that you have all presented today. Let us first acknowledge our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to hear a contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of our freedom and of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading, and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your Son's blood may have life through you and under your protection. Rejoice forever on hand. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul came to Antioch in Pisidia, he said in the synagogue, My brothers, children of the family of Abraham and those others among you who are God-fearing. To us, this word of salvation has been sent. The inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders failed to recognize Jesus. And by condemning him, they fulfilled the oracles of the prophets that are read Sabbath after Sabbath. For even though they found no grounds for his death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him put to death. 
And when they had accomplished all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he appeared to those who have come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses before his people. We ourselves are proclaiming this good news to you, that what God promised our fathers, he has brought to fulfillment for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, as it is written in the second song. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, Alleluia. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I'll proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Alleluia. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance, the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron scepter. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. Hallelujah. And now, O kings, give heed. Take warning, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice before him with trembling rejoice hallelujah 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 i am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If they were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today I would like to reflect with you from, from the first reading. And the reason I'm choosing to reflect with you from the first reading is because we would have time to reflect on this Gospel on Sunday. We will be listening to a full, the fuller version of this gospel on Sunday. 
And so I'd like to focus this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are joining us from. Scripture tells us that Paul came to Antioch in Pisidia. And he got into the synagogue to address, to address the worshippers of God in the synagogue. And this was how Paul started. And that's what caught my attention. My brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing. I like to focus on those words. And something else that caught my attention says the inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders failed, failed, were unable, could not recognize him. That means, yeah, they saw him. They touched him. But they were unable to recognize what he represented, what he stood for. They were unable to recognize the meaning behind this Christ or this Jesus, the carpenter. Most of them saw him as a carpenter, an imposter. They were unable to see or to recognize something more than just this son of Mary and Joseph, this carpenter, and in their own words, this imposter. So these are the two things I want us to focus on this morning. Paul said, my brothers, I wonder where the sisters were, because that caught my attention. Paul was a child of his time, born into a culture where his sisters, his mother, and his own wife did not matter. And though I'm sure Paul may have great regards for his mom, I don't doubt, I don't doubt that one minute. He must have great regard for his sisters and may even love them and would never want anything wrong to ever happen to any of his sisters or his mother. And if he has daughters, his daughters. But Paul could not speak as though he had a mother, or a sister, or a daughter. And the question is, why? He could not self-differentiate himself from the system that he was operating within. And, and so, within that system, he could only speak the way he did, to exclude his mother, to exclude his sisters, to exclude his daughters. And the sadness is that his mother would be okay with that if she was there. And his wife would be okay with that if she were there. And the same with his own daughter. That is a system of injustice that undermines and minimizes some subsets of people and yet we get so used to it that we think it's okay. And Paul goes on, he says, my brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others, the question is, who are those others that Paul was referring to? Those others. And the only thing he saw, the only quality he saw in them that mattered to him was not because they were human beings, but the only thing he saw was because they were God-fearing. That is the only thing that allowed him to even include them at all. And Paul is an awesome and wonderful human being. Don't get me wrong. But that's why this is very instructive, how sometimes holy men, holy women, good Christians, good Muslims, good Jews, good citizens, could be so blind 
to our own injustices, to the injustice that we breed on others, to the violence, emotional, spiritual, religious, and even social violence that we do to others, especially those undermined others, those on the fringes of society, those society does not count as important enough. So we can get used to all of that. And even in our own church, time has come for us to, to, to ask ourselves fundamental questions. Who would fit into the excluded categories in today's world that Paul was mentioning here? He did not call his sisters his mother in this case and did not call his daughters. Then when he even called us who were Gentiles, he referred to us as those others among you who are God-fearing. Today I want us as Christians to model what Jesus represented. To do what the Gentiles were unable to do, or what, sorry, what the Israelites were unable to do. They were unable to recognize that in Jesus was the Godhead, the presence of the Godhead. They saw him as poor, son of Mary, son of Joseph, the carpenter, and in some cases they called him an imposter, but they did not see the Godhead. As Christians who haven't given the eyes of God, the eyes of God to see what God sees, the ears of God to hear what God hears, the mind of God to understand what God understands, and of course the heart of God to love as God loves. We must grow beyond all the categories of discrimination that society has handed over to us across generations, whether those are racial or religious, or social, or class-based. We must overcome all of that. We must teach the world how we can live together as brothers and sisters of equal dignity and value with no one excluded. Instead, we open doors for inclusion, not exclusion. Because in the kingdom of God, there is no room for exclusion. There is every room for inclusion. That's what Jesus represented. That's what Jesus taught us. So as I hear Paul exclude his mother, his sister, his daughters, and exclude the rest of us, the question I ask myself, Philip, who are you still excluding right now in your spirituality? Who are you not seeing in your own life? only because they are different in some way than you, or because society has trained you to exclude them, and you can't even see what's wrong with that. And that's the same question I throw to you. Who are you so willing to exclude? Who are you so willing to undermine? Who are you so okay with if they were mistreated because you haven't thought to justify they deserve to be mistreated, or they deserve to be discriminated, or they deserve to be undermined, exploited, and even abused or violated. As Christian people, everyone, beginning from that child who was just conceived in its mother's womb, to the senior who is 110 years old and very close to her last day, everyone carries the image of the Almighty God. They are uniquely valuable. They cannot be violated. Their dignity is irreplaceable and they must be accorded it, every one of us. It's terrible when Christians, the bearers of God's images or image, become the structure of discrimination and exclusion. It is unacceptable. And I know Jesus does not accept that. May God help us to teach the message that Paul himself, much later, would get to understand. It says, now there are no longer Gentiles or Jews, 
slaves of free men, male or female, because we are all one in Christ Jesus. And I pray that there will come a day where that will be true. Where race will no longer be a category for exclusion. Where gender or religious preference will no longer be a category for exclusion. But we would all see ourselves as God's children, male, female, Gentiles, Jews, everyone. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Most merciful God, there is one God who is a creator of men and women, of Jews and Gentiles, of black, white, brown, of all races of people. There is one God who created all and everything there is. We are brothers and sisters. Today we ask you, O oh God, to give us the heart of your Son, that we are able to love everyone as you love them, and prefer none better than anyone else, because to you, everyone, is equal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick. Pray especially for our sick here at World to Read. Pray for our doctors and our nurses and all other healthcare workers who are doing their most every day here in this hospital and around the world to care for them. That God may bless their ministry with great results. And that their care may bring comfort and strength to our sick. And that you may protect and keep them safe and do same to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. Pray especially for those who died without family, without a loved one by their side. Pray and ask, dear God, that they may feel and be welcome into the throne of your mercy and grace. And I ask a blessing for their families that are grieving right now. Their lives have not fundamentally changed, oh God. Be with them. Help them find healing and grace and strength and comfort, especially at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear God, this coronavirus pandemic has caused enormous pain to your children around the world. There are those who are going to be struggling to put food on the table for their children, struggling to send their kids back to school, struggling because the business they once had, they once had is not anymore, struggling because they will be unemployed. Dear God, the future doesn't look clear to any one of us. We ask for the faith, the faith to trust that you have everything under control. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those who are celebrating some events, birthdays, anniversaries, or something else that is uniquely special to them today. We ask Almighty God that you may renew the grace for every state of their lives, for those who are married, that their grace of love and affection and respect in their married life may be renewed. For those who are having, having bad days, that you may grant them many more healthy, happy, and joyful years. And for anyone else who has a unique day today, that their, your blessing may renew that grace in them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most gracious God, hear these concerns we have lifted before you. Please accept and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. 
which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Accept in compassion, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed. An integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With confidence, let us pray using the words our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, 
Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant all peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. In the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. From me to you and to your families, may God's peace find you, be with you, and rest with you forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be clean. Now for spiritual communion, because we are unable to receive the Eucharist of Jesus Christ. Let us ask that the Lord the priest, the master, may bring himself to you where you are worshiping him right now. That you and your family may feel the power of his presence and be nourished spiritually by his body and his blood that you seek and desire. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Eucharistic celebration. Pray that God, who you seek and desire, who you call unto at this time, may be with you, may watch over you, may protect you and keep you safe. It's always a life to end everything I do by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Let us say the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 
May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirit that prowl through the world, seeking the winds of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing a song to our Blessed Mother. We will sing Hail Mary, Gentlewoman. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and all the hour of our death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright. Gentle mother, peaceful dove, Teach us wisdom, teach us love.